Well, good afternoon, and thank you, Joe, for that um, wonderful introduction. I'm going to jump right in because I know I've got 10 minutes, so I'm jumping right in. Today, I want to talk with you about Project CARES. It's a federally funded grant that I received from the U.S. Department of Education, Office of Special Education Programs. It's a five-year grant and received $1.25 million. We're in our last year of the grant. So this presentation will give you a little insight into what the grant is about, what we did during our course of the five years, and some of the outcomes. So as I mentioned, um, it's a federally funded grant. CARE stands for Culturally Affirming Responsive Education Specialist. It was again funded by the U.S. Department of Ed and 65% of the funding goes towards training school psychology, school counseling, and school social work students. These are graduate students who are accepted into the program but receive specialized <coughs> training in working with children from diverse backgrounds who are foster youth. I always like to talk, when I talk about my grant, I really hold this poem close to my heart because it's something that rem helps to remind me of what this population is like. So I want to read it to you. It's a, a poem by Tupac Shakur and it says, did you hear about the rose that grew from a crack in the concrete? Proving nature's laws wrong, it learned to walk without having feet. Funny it seems, but it Keep, by keeping its dreams, it learned to breathe fresh air. Long live the rose that grew from concrete when no one else ever cared. So I foster you, for me, represent those roses in the concrete. Many of them succeed. They go on and get their education and graduate, but many more do not. We have about 600,000 foster youth in the United States. 75% enter because of <laughs> neglect and 25% enter because of abuse. About 62% are school age youth and 30 to 40% of them receive special education services. Now if you think about that, from the general population, only about 15% of students are in, foster, are, I'm sorry, in special education but 30 to 40% of the foster youth population are in special education. Lower statewide scores, they're attending low performing schools, having trouble graduating, and 35% of foster youth have five or more school changes resulting in about six months of educational loss. So think about if you have a student who's moved five times, and each time it equates to about six month loss of educational progress. In California, we have about 62,000 foster youth, much of the same results, but higher rates of folks repeating a grade 75% are below grade level. Only about 30% graduate from high school and 3% from college. Higher rates of unemployment, incarceration, homelessness. And the grant focuses on what we call the triple impact. These are foster youth, they're not only foster youth, but they're foster youth who are also from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds, and they're also at risk for having a disability. This triple impact equates to longer lengths of stay in the foster care system, lower rates of reunification with their biological families, um, less stability, and also higher rates of reentry back into the foster care system. So this is what Project CARES focuses on. What we've done is we've taken graduate students in the school psych, school counseling, and school psychology program and said, okay, we need to train you to impact those lives. 
You need to know how to effectively intervene, providing mental health and educational resources. You need to be advocates in the schools. You need to be culturally competent. And you need to learn to work together. Because these youth need more than just one professional helping them. So this is how we did it. We had students go to seminars. We also provided institutes. They took extra courses, attended conferences, presented at conferences. They worked in schools providing services to this, populations, this population. And they also worked as CASAs or volunteered as CASAs, which are court appointed special advocates. So they received intensive training from Voices for Children, which is a nonprofit organization that connects CASAs as uh, makes them mentors to children in the foster care system. They're also the eyes and ears of the court systems. So they held ed educational rights. They made placement decisions. So this was an intensive training for our students. And then we also did some work around policy. During the course of the five years of the grant, we collected lots of information from our scholars about their experiences and their levels of preparation. So I'm not going through all of these, but what I do want to go through is the graduate survey. Because what's important, I think, for us is to know that once these students have graduated from the specialized training, are they doing what we train them to do? To show you a little bit about the outcomes. So one of the things that Grant did is responded to the shortages of school psych, school counselors, and school social workers by training these new scholars. So the grant, I mentioned five years, we had two cohorts. Each cohort was on the grant for two years. 55% of these students were from diverse backgrounds themselves. So we increased the number of ethnically diverse students in these professions. We also train them to be highly qualified to work with foster youth who have disabilities. About 80% of them served as the CASAs. And from that population, those students that worked as CASAs, four of the students that they worked with, the foster youth they worked with, were adopted in permanent homes. We also disseminate, disseminated information we presented at conferences. We conducted research. And these are some of our scholars. So this is our first cohort of folks who are actually working in schools and have been working in schools for about a year. So what we did is we asked them some questions about their experiences on the grant and whether what they learned they transferred to the schools that they're providing services for. So we found out, so it's about eight students that, that could, um, presented this or took the survey. Um, and these are two years in. So we looked at folks who are two years in to their um, profession. So it was eight students. Out of those eight, the majority of them are working with the foster youth population, often or exclusively. It's about two to three of them who are not working with foster youth as often. One I know is working in an adult setting. She's actually getting uh, new employment. But they're doing screening for foster youth. They're also overseeing foster youth for the entire school site that they're working with. They're providing mental health services. We also ask them, are you implementing interventions? Are you implementing the interventions that we shared with you, that we trained you with? Many of them said that they were using those interventions often. Um, many, some said sometimes. But those interventions included counseling groups and working with other professionals to implement those interventions. We asked them, were they involved in collaboration, the interdiscipl interdisciplinary work that we were so strongly working to um, improve so that professionals wouldn't be working in silos. And many of them were working um, collaboratively with other professionals. And some highlighted um, 
qualitative information. They said that they're collaborating with assistant principals, with school psychologists, school wo social workers. They're also utilizing a shared team approach. We also asked them if folks that they're working with understood that they had the knowledge um, that we shared with them. So are they the professionals on site for providing services? And many of them said yes. I'm the one that they look to when they're asking about foster youth services. It says I use the knowledge I gain on the grant and I'm the most knowledgeable one on campus about those issues. The last thing we did was ask them about self-care because as you know Folks that work with trauma, mental health issues, self-care is always an issue because of burnt out, being burnt out. And many of them said they knew it was still important, but it was harder to do than they thought it was, than, than originally planned. So for me, I think that we want to continue to look at some of these things. The grant is just a, a launch of what I'm hoping to do in the future with research. So we've trained some folks and now we want to make sure that we start to implement some research from the results that we're getting from our evaluations. So look, looking more at self-care, evidence-based practices. I also um, wrote another grant called I Care 2 Collaborative that, that looks at some of the similar issues. I'd love to do some DNA testing in foster youth and identity development to find out if they found, found out where their roots lie, does it change how they identify with themselves. So these are some of the um, things that I'm hoping to look at in the future. Some of the partners that we work with, and that's it. Sorry. So the stats you presented at the beginning are, are pretty top stats, right? Yes. Uh -huh. What are the trends in foster care size? Are, are there more kids going into foster homes? Are there less? What, what's the pattern right now? Um, the pattern is interesting. The pattern, it has been decreasing. So we are getting, um, the state is getting more entering foster care than they are exiting foster, foster care. And it depends on the population. So many of the foster youth who are from diverse backgrounds are entering and never exiting and not being adopted into permanent homes. Yes. Are the outcomes different when people go into foster care as babies versus, let's say, as teenagers or adolescents? Or yeah, yeah. I will say that what the research says is that it is harder for teens who enter the foster care system to be adopted into permanent homes and reunited with their families. So there is a trend for infants to be adopted and either re or reunified reuni with their families. Yeah. So let's say if you look at high school graduation yes. rates, is yes. that different for the different groups too? For the different groups of foster youth? Of, of when you enter into the foster care. That's a good question. I haven't, I haven't read anything about the entry, and, but I do know that once you enter foster care, those services, that education, those resources do start to dwindle. So I would think that if you're in it and you stay in it for a longer period of time, the, it equates to s smaller percentages of graduations compared to folks who are already in school and then tend to go in as a later teen. Yes? Could you share with us how uh, state policy changes in the, uh, the funding of school districts is now requiring more attention to this population, but how um, that attention is not necessarily um, benefiting from sufficient research about how to serve this population well? Yes. So um, right now, the, the big policy is the LCAP funding. So schools are receiving funding now to serve. Which stands for? <laughs> uh, local control accountability. And um, so they're taking some of those funds and using them towards servicing foster youth, but also 
for students who are second language learners or English language learners. However, what's happening in the district is that the funding really isn't going towards the majority of foster youth that are in our schools. And um, we're being challenged, or schools are being challenged with trying to figure out how to use that funding to support children in the foster care system. And so the research really needs to align well with how do you train folks to work with children in the foster care system, but then also once you train them, how do you continue to support foster youth who continue to go through the system and help them to graduate? Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. So you've trained all these people and are there jobs out there for them? No. Um, you've trained a lot of people and so are there jobs out there in the schools for these people? Yeah, uh, surprisingly all of the scholars that have gotten um, positions this year got them because of their specialization in working with foster youth. So many of them sought out positions where they could actually work with children in the foster care system. So we have someone at the Da Vinci schools in LA. We have someone working in Minnesota with immigrant populations who are also foster youth. We have someone in uh, Washington working with children in the foster care system. We have someone else who's over a district in special education with a specific um, with a specific uh, foster youth population. So many of them are getting jobs because of that specialization. This is an off-track question. Um, the, I, I've heard very often, I know a lot of people who do foster care, and I heard that there are, are there's this societal concern that parents, uh, that foster parents uh, do it for money versus do it for concern for the kids. Uh, you, you've obviously interacted with lots of foster parents. Mm -hmm. Could you comment on that? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the first foster parent that I ever interacted with was my grandmother. So she was a foster parent in the 70s where the funding was not that great. Um, and uh, she was a single foster parent. Uh, times have definitely changed since then. So there are some families who um, do receive funding um, and, 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 but every foster parent that I've come, come into contact with um, has done it because they want to help the children. And quite frankly, the money really isn't as much. I mean, it doesn't equate to what, the, what they have um, on their hands oftentimes. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>